there was for Sabah, aforetime, a sign in their homeland, two gardens to the right and to the left. Eat of the sustenance provided by your Lord, and be grateful to him. A territory fair and happy, and a Lord oft forgiving. But they turned away from Allah, and we sent against them the flood, released from the dams, and we converted their two garden rows into gardens, producing bitter fruit and tamarisks and some few stunted lot trees. That was the requital we gave them because they ungratefully rejected faith. And never do we give such requital except to such as our ungrateful rejectors. In the Quran, there is a reference to the people of Sabah and the calamity of flood that befell them because of their ungratefulness. There is even a detailed explanation about the occurrence of this calamity. Since the calamity that was sent to the people of Sabah is mentioned as Sayl al-Arim, which means the flood of Arim. This expression of the Quran also gives clues about the way this flood occurred. The meaning of the word Arim is a dam or barrage. The phrase Sayl al-Arim means the flood that takes place as a result of the collapsing of the dam wall. Now let us see how the news about the people of Sabah of which was informed by the Quran has been proved by historians with the records of history. The community of Sabah was one of the four biggest civilizations which lived in South Arabia. The historical records about the community of Sabah report that this nation was a state like Phoenicians who were occupied with intense commerce activities. The Sabaeans are known to have been a civilized nation in history. In the inscriptions of the rulers of Sabah, the words such as restore, dedicate, and construct are frequently used. The Mahrib Dam, which is one of the most important works of this people, is an important indication of the technological level this people had reached. With the Mahrib Dam, which they had constructed with very advanced technology, the Sabayan people became owners of a great irrigation capacity. The fruitful lands they thus obtained and their control over the trade routes allowed them to lead a magnificent and luxurious lifestyle. The total area that could be irrigated by the dam was 9,600 hectares, 5,300 hectares of which belonged to the southern plains, while the remaining part belonged to the northern plain. These two plains were referred to as Maharib and Two Plains in the Sabayan inscriptions. Perhaps the expression in the Quran, two gardens to the right and to the left, points to the imposing gardens and vineyards in these two valleys. Thanks to this dam and its irrigation systems, the region became famous as the best irrigated and most fruitful area of Yemen. The Frenchman J. Holvey and the Austrian Glaser proved from written documents that the Maharib Dam existed since ancient times. In the documents written in the Heimer dialect, it is stated that this dam rendered the territory very productive. After the collapse of the dam wall, all of the country was inundated by the flood. The canals that had been dug by the Sabayan people and the wall that had been constructed by building barriers between the mountains were destroyed and the irrigation system fell apart. As a result, the territory, which was like a garden before, turned into a place where weeds grew and there was no fruit left but the cherry-like fruit of little stumpy trees. Besides, 
There are inscriptions written in the Sabaean language on the pillars of Sabah. The Christian archaeologist Werner Keller states the following in his book called The Holy Book Was Right, Undai Bibli Hat Dok Right. The flood of Arim occurred as it was described in the Quran. Since the existence of such a dam and the destruction of the whole country by its collapse prove that the example given in the Quran about the people of the garden was indeed realized. Now we want to attract attention to the following points. 1. The Quran mentions the people of Sabah and historians accept it. 2. The Quran states that the people of Sabah lived in a beautiful city with green vineyards, gardens and orchards and historians accept it. 3. The Quran mentions a big dam in that city, and historians accept that. 4. The Quran states that the dam irrigated two gardens, and historians accept it. 5. The Quran mentions the calamity of flood that took place as a result of the collapsing of the dam wall, and historians accept it. 6. The Quran states that the vineyards and gardens were destroyed, and historians accept it. What do they mean? Yes, by accepting all of the news stated by the Quran, historians actually accept that the Quran is the Book of Allah. Because it is impossible for an illiterate person to discover them all on his own and inform people about them. Now we want to ask, how can those who say the Quran is the word of a human being explain the accuracy of the news related to the past reported by the Quran? While the Quran expresses loudly like a thunder that it is the book of Allah with the news it gives about the past, how can their voice, which is like the buzz of a mosquito, silence it? <laughs>